All right, folks, welcome to this exciting video where you once again join me in the beautiful landscape of Scotland. And for this adventure, I've come to the wild, li the wild lands of Glen Isla here. And this is actually an old 1920s hunting lodge hidden within this forest here. I've been here a couple of times over the years, but today it's like minus three right now. And I'm just thinking like, it'd be cool to go down here for an adventure because it's quite near the road. It doesn't take long in these conditions to get super frozen. And then after this, there's actually another little abandoned location near here that I was thinking I could go and visit. But I might keep that for the next episode, folks. It's cool to go down to this old hunting lodge and see what's left. It's like 1920s Art Deco style. And it actually had a short life as a hunting lodge. It was abandoned soon after it was built, really. It must have only been occupied and used for potentially 20, 30 years. Maybe not even that. Probably even like 10 or 15 years this place would have been used and then it was abandoned. And then as the years went on, it was stripped out and a lot of the scrap and stuff was taken away and the fixtures and fittings were taken out leaving a skeleton of history to be explored to these days. And often I love coming back to places, even if I've been there before, because you notice so many different details the next time you arrive somewhere. And sometimes you can see things from a different perspective. Just imagine how this old track used to be leading down the hill to this house. When the house was constructed in the 1920s, there was no trees in this area here and the landscape just look totally different. But the wild hills out here haven't changed. And you can just see it at this side, all the brown color here from the dead ferns and heather. And then the frost on the grass of the field at this side here. So at this point in the forest, there's a thick layer of leaves. And that's because now all the trees have pretty much fully shed for the winter conditions. Sometimes in places like this area of Scotland, you get some proper hard winters and some wild weather. And that's why these old buildings deteriorate so quickly. Once they're not maintained and looked after, it just goes downhill. And sometimes the historical details of the place can go missing and lost, forgotten forever. When I first got told about this hunt lodge, I got told that it was just like some stone outlines and remains in the forest and I wasn't expecting much when I walked down here and then when I finally saw how big it was and how much was still standing I was just blown away folks just check out the atmosphere of this the abandoned wonders of Scotland sometimes in my YouTube shorts recently I've been putting a throwback to like old videos like this and that's what got me thinking about this place I wanted to come back and explore it I just love going out in adventures, all weathers and all conditions. And even when it's minus three, it's still so much fun to come out and do something. See a little bit of the world. Just look at the mad character of this, folks. Wow, it's proper eerie here. The colour of the cement on top of the... It's got like a cement render. This is so cool, folks. Look at this wild land we're in. It's frosted forest floor that we're on. You can hear the crunch of the leaves underfoot. And just look at this, a piece of history like this hidden in the middle of it. Wow. I was here one time with AKR and we were exploring around here and it was summer conditions and it's amazing to see the difference today when everything's just like died back. Sometimes at this time of year, there's so much history to be seen because it's no covered up for all that vegetation. At one time as well, there was like a secondary little building on here with a roof at this corner. And then there was a staircase that led up the building to the top floors. There was obviously the second story, but also on this building, being Art Deco in style, it had a flat roof. And you can see the tall, long windows in the design. Nowadays it looks quite square and quite boxy. Almost factory-like in appearance, but you can just see almost how it would have been in its original glory by the shape of the windows. And imagine how it was when the render was freshly put on. 
the smoke was rising from the chimneys. I've actually got some pictures of this place, I think, like, so when it was first built, so I'll put them into the video at this point right here, folks. Here's a couple of original photographs of this place. Yeah, so back at this time, this was kind of the end. When this was built, this was kind of like the end of the good times for those rich families that had their hunting lodges dating back to like the Victorian period when it was all the rage. When Queen Victoria used to enjoy coming to Scotland back in those days, everybody followed the trend and started like proper. I just saw two deer around in the field, but they all, like all the rich families started building their own hunting lodges. And, 1920s would have been the tail end of it. Both the wars finished off that way of life in a big way. Often, a house like this would give employment to so many people in a glen. And like, even when the family that owned it weren't here, the, the house pe like keepers and people that operated in the house would be there all year round. And it's mad just to think about that amount of money they had back at that time. I can see there's almost been like a felt bitumen coating along that top covering there of the roof. And that probably went right over the roof. And that's a detail that I hadn't noticed before there. It's cool to see this front wall before it's fallen down. You can see the shape of it with the step on it. And this would have been the main front entrance into the house here at this end. The road would have obviously looked down the way we came up in. And then you can imagine this when it was likely to have been landscaped in the early days. Yeah, the top of this roof. I don't know how well it comes out on the camera right there, but it's proper leaning over right there. And it's just insane. See another interesting detail there, folks. There's actually still the things that would have held their own pipes, the wall there, the down pipe. I'll push on through these bushes and go in the front door. It's probably... No, actually, that's safe. Wow. Mad overgrown wilderness, folks. Yeah, it's probably not actually that safe standing under the stonework there now. See, from that wooden... There's one more wooden batten left sticking out of there. And that shows that there was actually a frontage on there, like a bit of a design that stuck out. And it was obviously supported from the wooden beams. But they were also potentially the wooden beams that led right in to the inner part of the structure. And you can see here how grand and massive it is. Whereas originally when you came in this door, you wouldn't have even seen that far down the house. At this point, there would have been like a grand entrance way. And probably doors going off to these little side rooms with the massive grand windows looking up to the hills which are now blocked from the trees and then to this side here would have been the staircase leading up and you can see it this window here would have been as the stairs went up that area and then that grand window halfway up would have been on like a landing and then more stairs would have gone up to a top lobby and it's so interesting to think about that you can tell how many years this has been abandoned from the size of the trees grown within the structure and look at this some of the wooden lath is still here wooden lath was put on the walls at this time and then the plaster was then applied to the lath and that was what you saw in a lot of old houses you still see it on most of the houses i explore from this era you can see in the 1920s as well this house has been built with rough stone and all different types of stone so probably when it was finished, it looked grand and mighty, whereas under all the plaster and under the walls, it was quite quite a shabby construction. There's actually an interesting like square in the floor here, which is must have been something taken out here, or remains of an old floor. Yeah, it could have even been where the old staircase was like mounted in. If they had stripped stuff like that out, they would have just dug probably right down to the foundation of it. 
and you can see the wooden pieces into the wall and that was used to obviously attach the wooden lath. Yeah, look on there folks, there's actually an old square nail. There's actually something nailed on there. And it's mad to think how many years ago that square nail was chapped in. Think about the pride the builders must have had in a building like this when they had finished. A grand mansion almost, even though it's a hunting lodge. It's as big as some small mansion houses probably of the era. I just love to see it. It's so peaceful up in these areas. When I was on the way up the road there, I could see the big red kite. Birds of prey just circling in the sky. And there's just so much of that wildlife and nature on these adventures. It's cool to see, as well as the mad history that I end up exploring. Yeah, let's head on round here, folks. It's taking every detail of the history. And imagine the people sitting at the fireside, maybe reading a book of the era. Think about the fashions and designs even of the architecture within these rooms. It would be so interesting to see. The only pictures I've ever seen of this building are from the outside. And you can see all the little fireplaces and things that must have been part of each little room. Each room's had a different purpose, maybe a cupboard here or a certain different type of room, whereas that one's been more grand with a bigger window. And then up the stairs, maybe bedrooms or whatever, had the big windows with the double, the double glass. And then these wooden, these wooden lintels are still here, but a cool thing, the old stone pillars are still within these windows, which is an interesting detail of the history. Check these out, folks. Holding up and supporting the lintel, which gives it so much strength. The lintels are all chipped away and fallen away, but the, it's just still standing. It's just standing enough for us to see how it looks, folks. That's mad. There's another cool detail over here. Yeah, this is an interesting point here. Look at this, you can see the edge of what must have been the old concrete floor here. The old cement floor. And this area here must have been the old kitchen. You can see how originally... It must have had a different fire originally here, with the chimney leading on up. But then, you can see how they filled it in with cement at a different time and changed how it looked. And I'm guessing at that time, they had put in like a range, a proper like range cooker, rather than what they had, they must have had originally a different device for cooking here. But at that time, the technologies were moving on so quick. If this place had been on the go for 10 or 15 years, there's a fair chance it was updated and upgraded with the latest of technologies. Look at this last corner piece of wood here. Look at the detail, how it's like the round piece. And then look at that, the old wooden lath still on the roof of the cupboard. You can see some bits, it's the red bricks. Other places, it's the stone blocks. Some parts of the constructions, even just the round boulders here that you find on the hill of Glen Isla. And I think it's had, potentially from this fire here, it's had some sort of heating, heating duct leading out through that hole. Because I can see next to that hole there's another end leading through like a pipe. And I think that must have fed warm air up into that lobby area at the second story. And I love to find details like that and notice things like that as well. Because that's the sort of architectural details that would go missing if any of this falls down. The corner of the tower's down and the last remaining bit at this side's almost dropped as well, which is sad. And that opening we can see up here would have been the door onto the roof. And I can see the big hinge parts are still within the brickwork. And look at this, imagine the folk going up and down this stair. This would have most likely been where the maids and... Butlers and maids really would have gone up. They weren't really servants back in the day. They were treated well and looked after and it was a good job to have. But this would have been most likely the stairs that they would have used at that time. The maids maybe going up and down to tend to the guests. Sometimes they would have a bell in the room that they rung for service and there would be a board and it would tell the 
serving staff, like which room it was that needed attention. And then the other stair at the far end would have been the grand stair where the family of the house would have used. Because often the serving staff just stayed away from the family and they had their whole own area. Most likely the staff were on the bottom story here. Maybe even just one section of the bottom story and then the main family would have just lived up the stair most of the time. But it's almost like this corner room here. I always theorised it could have been like a grand library area because it's got this cut out here which you can imagine the books maybe in shelves. But another detail I was noticing before we move on with this adventure, on the lath and plaster there's other little bits put in with circles and I believe that's where the old banister must have been attached because they needed the room like the space up there, they would have put that piece of wood right in against the brack. So then obviously the banister was quite far away, whereas if they had put it on the outside of the lath and plaster, it would have stuck out. Which is a random detail, folks. Check that out, folks. Credit to the construction of the building. There's a tree actually resting on it up there, and it's still holding up. And look at that there, the four chimney pots are still up there. Remarkably, all the chimney pots are mostly still on those walls, even the ones across there. There's a tree coming out of one, but they're all still sitting up there at different angles. Often the chimneys were the strongest parts of the walls, because obviously the way they're constructed, it's like having a massive solid pipe, like a garden leading up your wall. Check this out here as well, folks. Look how this is just about dropping. The more years that pass, that's the reason it's cool to document this stuff before it does drop fully. You can see the strain and the stress on that wood. It's almost cracked and fallen fully down. Another interesting detail here, folks, with this building. These grand windows here would have actually stepped out slightly from the construction and they would have had like a little roof here. So you can imagine their grand bay windows and they would have all been ripped out at the time when all the items within the house was getting ripped out. And look, there's been these three grand bay windows and you can imagine how light a property it must have been inside. It must have just been amazing back at that time. To see inside these places when they were in their prime, look, you can. this one's got the most left. You can see how it looked. You can see how the grand bay window had stepped out and then the window frames would have been up at this height here. And then people would have been sitting at that time getting such a great view of these hills at the top of Glen Isla. Yeah, and then this is us back down to the side where we went in the front door. All these trees are just pushing on the structure. Some of the trees are lying on the top of the roof. It's just a matter of time before these places fall down and the details are gone. With a place like this, it looks like the top half of the wall will be the, will be the detail that's gone first. So with this video, you can see how it's had the grand shape to it. It's not just been a plain, flat top. And when that falls, who knows how much of this is going to come down with it. It's just been cracked and crumbling for years, and sometimes we have property like this. It can be the winter frost and ice that pushes the bricks apart and pops them off. Obviously the trees on it doesn't help a bit. But that's the sort of wild lands these places are, folks. They were built strong, kind of modern building. I don't know if it would stand up as long as that. The materials they use nowadays, it's a lot less proper stone and metal and proper wooden lintels and stuff. Wow, what an angle of history that is. Yeah, because it's super cold today, folks, I'm just keeping it moving. We're checking out the history and we're on our way. I can see there's more of those wooden little beams sticking out this side, which must have held on that front edge that's gone all the way around and I think the reason it's missing is because it was actually lead coated and that was part of the original design as well it had that lead coated surround going right the way around the architecture 
So they've obviously ripped that off at a certain time. Another interesting detail I never mentioned as well, folks, that little wooden shed there, that would have actually been probably the outhouse around this area. Because back at the days, early days of Scotland, Ken, probably the workers of this house would have had to go outside to that shed to relieve themselves. And it, would have, it wouldn't have originally been there, it would have been out somewhere within the land or within the forest. Because every Scottish house had that at one time. See another detail here, folks. You can see how the lead frontage there has gone right around. I don't even know if that's the right word for it, but the lead bit that sticks out. You can actually see as well, there's some remains of the lead left. So they probably just like cut off as much as they could back in the original days. That's how the water and stuff just got into these places so quick. Can the main structural integrity was taken away and then just destroyed by the weather in no time at all. Because even by the 1950s, this place was a ruin and it looked similar to this. Obviously less decayed and less degraded, but the thing is, it's like every night and day a place like this falls down more and more. It is just sad to see that history lost. So much rubble and stuff's fallen down from all the walls inside. You can see the height of the floor. Whereas originally it would have been about the same as where the ground is here. You know, look at that, the old harling on the wall. Covering up all that kind of rough stonework that they've used to build this one. It's like it's either been built in a hurry or on a lower budget than normal, but by the 1920s, Ken, the money was going out of that way of life, and those sorts of families were starting to feel it. And then the war has kind of just finished all that off. This could be one of the last hunting lodges built, especially around this area. At this time of year as well, folks, the sun doesn't get very high in the sky in Scotland. That's about as high as it gets. It gets dark early. And that's how also it doesn't get too warm during the day. The sun doesn't get a chance to melt all this ice and then the next day it freezes again. And before you know it, you've got that layer of ice on everything. It's so super cold. It's just a madness. Yeah, what a cool wee adventure that's been. I'm actually going to go in the next video to a little abandoned building that's around here. So if you want to see that, you can tune in to the next episode. But I'm actually going to end this one here, folks. It's been cool to check out this Art Deco hunting lodge hidden in the wild lands here at the foot of Glen Isla. And it's been special just to document what we've seen again. See the little details, like... I hadn't noticed before that it had like a bitumen coating around the top. Also, I couldn't remember seeing the fact that it had the lead on those outer pieces. That's the kind of details often that's the first thing to go missing. It's like parts of the roof, parts of the construction even. Anyway folks, I'm ending this one here. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll be back soon with the next adventure, wherever I end up going.